Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Sleep Nanny podcast. I'm joined today by Rebecca Matveva. She is amazing. She's not only a mum and a wife and a partner and founder of a business called Atomic IELTS. Rebecca is here today to talk to us about her journey and share all, all about her expertise um, and the wonderful work she does with her own children, bringing them up bilingual at the same time. I mean, this lady has her hands full. Rebecca, a huge warm welcome to the Sleep Nanny podcast. Oh, thank you very much for having me today. It's lovely to be here. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Pleasure to have you here. I would love for you to um, just share a bit with us about what you know what sort of got you what what your business is atomic ielts it's fascinating um and you what what you do and what brought you to be doing this um it's really interesting absolutely oh well thank you very much so um yeah atomic ielts is um the the latest version of the business that i've been working on for a while with a partner um and ielts um just in case people haven't heard of it, it's the International English Language Testing System. Um, And it's basically the the qualification, the exam that helps um, speakers of other languages gain access to British or English speaking universities. So not necessarily just concentrated in Britain, but it can be Australia, New Zealand, um, America tend to have a different um, qualification that they ask for, but they also use it. Um, And yeah, it's basically it ties in well with my passion of communication, helping people get the the best results through being able to speak to other people and yeah, basically craft the lives through language. So Atomic IELTS was founded on the back of that, helping, wanting to help people get the best results to get the best qualifications from the institutions that they wanted to join. And of course, it all ties in with this background of mine in um, linguistics and language learning. Um, I would say it's pretty much a lifelong journey that's got me to this stage. So, um, yeah. I love that. It's it's come from, like you say, it's a lifelong journey. It's in, you know, come literally from all of your own experiences. And talk to us a bit about... you know, your own children as well um that sure. you know, how old are they and they're they're bilingual already that's correct yeah so um yeah we're quite a way into our journey now I would say so I've got uh, two children my daughter Maya she's 10 um and my youngest is Daniel he's seven um and yeah so they're bilingual English is of course the main language um, we live over here in the UK Um, And Russian is their second language. And it's actually the language that we speak at home as well, because my husband is from Russia originally. Um, We've we've lived over here since 2008. Um, But again, we we met out there. I was um, I studied German and Russian at uni. um, And as a part of that, you get to spend your third year abroad in the countries or country where your language, your foreign language is being spoken. Um, and it wasn't enough for me. I wanted more after uni um, and I found myself back living in St. Petersburg where I've been studying. Um, and yeah, I met my husband there. The, the rest is history, as they say. Um, we got married out there, but my children were both born in the UK. And again, like I said before, as lifelong, a lifelong, well, I'm basically a language geek at the end of the day. It's so not just a qualification it's definitely something that I live and breathe and we really wanted our children when they were born to have that connection to my husband's culture but it's more about emotions really I couldn't imagine being in that position um that some of our friends from um like mixed marriages where there's there's two languages in the household I couldn't imagine being in that position Mm -hmm. where my child didn't speak to me in my own language Um, And that's what we wanted to maintain for my husband, but also give them a link to their Russian speaking relatives um, as well and not have that barrier between us. Because, yeah, for me, language is all about breaking down barriers. Um, You know, we do brilliant things when we can communicate properly with one another. Um, And yeah, so that's that's pretty much led us to where we are. And um, everything that I've done in terms of all that we've done in terms of bringing up the kids bilingually we've been muddling through we've been experimenting we've been following our instincts 
Um, the, yeah, scientific research, I can't really say that I've ever really come across a great deal. Um, I've obviously consulted forums and websites and asked advice. We've got contacts that we kind of bounce ideas off, but it's pretty much doing what works for yourself and what works for you as a family. So yeah, yeah that's what kind of brought us here. There's, there's lots of different approaches that you can take. And we've mm -hmm. kind of, wouldn't say chosen one very um, rigidly, but we've pretty much selected what works for us and try mm -hmm. to get results in, in that respect. Yeah. Do you think your like, skills as a linguist and, and your um, background knowledge has come into play there, though, with helping your children to develop the, the bilingual skills? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I mean, um, even sort of work related, um, yeah. I've tended to focus on helping Russian speakers master English because I know exactly where their difficulties are coming from. Yeah. So yeah. when um, again, I'm in this unique position of listening to the language acquisition of my children um, in both languages and realising where it comes from. And yeah, um, without getting too technical, I would say that English is their base language and they definitely they have this really good passive understanding of Russian and can communicate freely in it. But they still use English as their base language. So when they're struggling to grasp something or um, constructing some interesting sentences in Russian, I'm thinking, ah, I know why they're saying it that way. I can then go from the flip side and say well actually we need to do this when we speak Russian and again I don't I don't ever want to get too technical with them communication yeah. is what we want from them and yeah. for them to yeah. use it actively but yeah it definitely plays a part and um yeah I just think it's such a a valuable thing for them to have again from the linguistics background but you know you um the, the brain connections that they make and the the abilities to then um turn that to other areas of their lives are uh, really invaluable and I wanted them to have that and I hope that and we do regularly communicate with them and say we respect that yeah you do go to a Saturday school and that you do have to make an effort and um, when you sometimes would rather relax and we respect that but you're going to thank us hopefully in Oh, definitely I'm sure they will and 100% the skill communication skills all round are so important and for especially for little ones um i do imagine though like when we see children go through the school system in the uk and we see them from the early years and they're learning english like and and for lots of children that's all they're learning for the first few years they're learning their their home language um perhaps not from bilingual families and there's there's a lot to learn there anyway right uh, let alone when you bring another language into the mix and um and so it does always fascinate me where you know we have we have families where their children grow up from the beginning learning dual languages um you teach a lot around older students learning um to be able to excel in in their professions but if we sort of strip this back to childhood do they learn faster when they're younger is it easier to because they're not obviously applying when they're babies and young children they're not applying the same mental thinking to okay this is a verb phrase and this is a you know once you know one language and you add another on you're probably going to complicate it but as a baby or a child you're just sort of accepting accepting that language in is that just learning it in the same way that he learns Russian and that gave us an understanding. Ah, so he's not kind of acquiring it in the same way that his sister is. Um, he's got the technical side going on. So um, yeah, it's it's obviously, it's quite a ham-fisted way of saying, um, yeah, they learn in different ways, but um, language acquisition is so interesting and you were absolutely right to say, it's just in there when they're a child. Yes, you do have to work at it, absolutely um and you keep in to have it actively used that is the battle but the passive knowledge is most definitely there from an early age and it's mind-blowing watching it so. yeah absolutely i imagine it, it absolutely is um yeah so i can i completely can relate to that because i um 
learned Spanish but as an older student and um, I remember going through that I, I needed to understand the patterns and even now I could go through the different verb endings and things like that but actually I bet there is a lot to be said for just literally walking around and pointing at things and looking at things and labeling and them and naming them but when you think now like if you, if you were to think in a different language oh, what's the word for tree you've got to think oh the word for tree is whereas if you've learned it from a young age you just it's just that is that thing it's just got two names or however many languages you speak so I think that's that's how I see it that later in life we're going it's the word for and it's the one you call it as the baseline one where so for your children I guess having English and Russian adding in French is like oh these are the words for what we call this only they've got two at the baseline um absolutely yeah Yeah. I do find that really because I I remember people in college who were just really good at languages it's like they could do any language and they just would excel at it because their brain was wired that way um yeah Yeah. and it's yeah it's it's funny as well because like um a lot of my friends said like oh you're good at languages and I would say no I'm not I'm just really stubborn um (laughs) that's my problem so yeah when I sat there at the start of my Russian degree thinking what have I done why am I doing this because it was I I had German at A level but um, Russian was from zero so um the first term I was thinking like what on earth have I let myself in for Mm. um I'm not good at this this is not happening and it took me a long while to be honest with you to actually get to that stage where I was confident that I was speaking well yeah. and speaking yeah. accurately and able to sort of recognize mistakes and things but um yeah so some people do have this I agree with you like this natural aptitude for languages and they they pick it up I would say now I would probably be happier um and I have dabbled in like all the languages as well that I think now I could use say German and Russian and obviously English as a baseline and one thing I would say, um, again, hoping not to go off at a tangent, is that we learn so much about other languages when we actually learn about our own. Um, yeah. And it wasn't until I did um, an extra qualification after uni in teaching English as a foreign language that I saw how our language looked to people who don't speak it as, as, um, as their mother tongue. Um, you know, did you know that we had 12 tenses? Did you know how, why do we say I've done this and not I've been doing this, for example? Um, and it, it's it's things like that that help you see from the flip side where dif- difficulties can arise because um, for every problem that we've got that we can present to a Russian speaker, they've got one for us um, yeah, right back yeah. at you. Um, and yeah, that has also tied in with um, like Maya and Daniel as um, they've been growing up bilingually it's like oh I know why they've done that um you know even things like word order um and yeah they'll actually construct Russian sentences using English word order and they don't actually have to um and as they've grown up I've noticed Maya is getting into a more natural communication um like it, it just sounds more natural coming from her and she's getting to the point where she's correcting my Russian sometimes mm-hmm. which makes me overjoyed um yeah yeah um and I hope that Daniel will be following in her footsteps but he'll get there in his way his as way well. yeah different yeah. approach yeah yeah definitely, definitely is it true that English is the most complex language <laughs> that we have like <laughs> you said how many tenses 12 tenses and so many different words and ways to say things um I I do feel for anybody learning English that doesn't speak it but then I don't really have anything to compare it to and so having looked at our language as um from teaching it as a foreign language I can imagine does reveal so much more about English language is is it one of the most complex or is that a bit of a myth it's um it's probably a little bit of both to be honest with you because I guess it depends which language group um your native language belongs to as well so um Russian belongs to the Slavic languages group and um as a result there are certain things that they will find more challenging than someone who for example um speaks German as their uh, native language um Mm -hmm. but 
yeah, there are some things. I mean, our spellings, I mean, that's ridiculous. You've um, gone through phonics at school and everything. And I, I do tell um, my students who have got children who go through the primary school system over here, I said, stick to them like glue right now, because this is your one beautiful chance to actually see how things are read out and spelt and um, get that practice as well, because mm. it definitely it does present a lot of difficulties. Mm. Um, and yeah, I would say it's it's definitely probably up there with one of the more complex ones but my um, again I'm still limited as a linguist I, um, I know German I know Russian and I understand the Slavic language system um, yeah. but it's yeah it's it swings and roundabouts I would say um, for every problem there's a counter those, problem. Those groups just talk to me a bit about that because I actually find that really interesting because you there's the Latin language yeah. system right and then because there's so many similarities between um I think Spanish and French and uh Portuguese um but then German's different and so and I'd yeah sorry for my ignorance there I don't know the different groups but I can see where there are those similarities and so are are you are you saying that then if it's a language that's from one of those groups it's going to be more um yeah 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 grammatically they'll have quite a few points in common so um just to give a a basic example so um i've taught speakers of russian ukrainian um polish as well and those three all belong to the slavic um group of languages and in the present tense they don't have the verb to be so they don't say i am a teacher they'll say i a teacher and that Mm -hmm. is fine i fine um weather good um, that's right. how it goes in their language. So that's one of the first things you have to introduce, basically. The, mm-hmm. the verb, like we use the verb to be in yeah. in English, and um, yeah, things that you wouldn't necessarily think about that cause problems. Spellings we can learn. Um, people think that maybe that's a very difficult part of English. It is, but um, there are sometimes bigger problems that we don't realise for speakers of like other languages. Um, yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. that obviously wouldn't present a difficulty. To a German speaker because they've got the same thing going on um, in in German, so mm-hmm. it's um, it's fine. So yeah, depending on which language group you're um, teaching and helping, um, yeah, that's they have their different difficulties and things that they grasp very easily. So mm. yeah, and it, it just means that when I'm speaking to, even though I don't speak Polish, I don't speak Ukrainian, I can still recognise certain parts because of their relationship mm-hmm. to one another, but. Um, it means that at least grammatically I can understand yeah you'll probably have a difficulty because I suspect in your language this happens because it happens also in other Slavic languages that I've got experience with so yeah, yeah. that's yeah that's fascinating there's these different connections and the groups as you say and yeah. so yeah. would you say for parents then Obviously, in the school systems, you learn certain languages and at different ages in different schools. And it's a great thing for them to do. Um, But I know you'll get, you know, you'll get children that go, well, I'm never going to use this language, but maybe I would use this language and so on. Um, As part of growing up and part of education, or if somebody even Mm -hmm. has a school where they don't teach a language maybe not until secondary um there are loads of things popping up i've seen groups and you know yeah. opportunities to learn languages earlier how would you say from as a linguist and and as a mum of bilingual children how would you say um introducing another language and learning another language is beneficial to a child you know if we've got parents listening who perhaps are like well I, we don't have a bilingual home and you know that doesn't apply to me but they're curious about those yeah. communication benefits yeah. like yeah, yeah. how do yeah. you say that helps oh absolutely um it's it's amazing to watch and again um, not necessarily from a bilingual perspective so um when when you see when your child realizes that their other language works Mm. that the look on their faces it's amazing and um I will I'll use the bilingualism as a first example but then I'll move away from that for um just as a a word of like yes to to families who may not have um, a bilingual background so firstly Maya's face when she went to um 
back when we were able to visit St. Petersburg more easily. Um, we went onto a playground. She um, had just started sort of really conversing um, in Russian and she made friends. Um, and her face as she realised this, this other language that has just been used in our house, it works in other places. Mm. This is amazing. And to watch, I was watching a shy child's confidence grow in front of my very eyes because mm. she suddenly realised I have this extra way of communicating and all these people that they can be potentially my friends. You know, you've probably seen yourself on playgrounds. You know, there's usually some form of friendship um, yeah. you know, formed there because children are confident enough at that age, at that young age of say three, four, five, to to go up to another child and just start playing with them. Yeah. And to to watch that happening in um, the other language was amazing. Um, and even Daniel, who is less confident with his Russian. Um, he will ask to be introduced if he hears that on the playground he will ask his dad like can you introduce me um you know let's kind of engineer a nice situation where I can start talking to this uh, this little boy and yeah before you know it they're sharing the sweets and uh, and everybody's happy good times um taking that out of the bilingual um setting um yes so French we we had our battles with it we've had our tears um <laughs> But um, last year we were away and the same scenario, we were on the playground and it turns out there was a, a little girl playing um, that seemed to have quite a friendly face. And yeah, my daughter felt quite confident to go up to her and start speaking. Um, they could not converse, but that was fine because the intention to be friendly was there. Yeah. And I think with those few words, that meant everything on the playground. So, mm. yeah, it can definitely help with, um, yeah, just this development. It, it's, it does give them something outside the classroom because yeah. it's, I definitely witnessed this confidence and um, understanding that I can communicate, I can make friends and it's not scary. I'm not stuck in my own little bubble here and not mm. able to, to speak to anybody. Yeah, I only know a couple of words, but that's enough that's enough and like you say actually like it's it's the meaning behind that the yeah. confidence the yeah. the fact that there's it's, it's tools isn't it it's equipping yeah. them with more tools to express yeah. themselves to yeah. um connect Absolutely. and and how great is that even if even if they don't particularly have an occurrence like that where they are in a playground or they come yeah. into a situation where they're in real life where they're with somebody yeah. speaking that yeah. just the fact that they've got this sort of the, these tools in their arsenal that they can use to communicate I suppose psychologically opens up further ways of thinking and communicating and not being sort of restricted to one so yeah. from yeah just another way to say it in another language that could also yeah. open the thought process of how you know it's almost asking yourself wait how do I how do I communicate this is yeah. it uh, do I need to express this somehow do I need to yeah. like I, I wonder if there's yeah if, if there were areas of the brain and I don't I don't know the science on this and I know this is another topic but I wonder yeah. if there are some areas in the brain that are expanded by learning another language that just enable you to become a better communicator yeah anyway yeah. even it's, you know in our in, in within the same language um yeah yeah I'm I'm fairly sure it, it has been discussed and I've seen again um sort of internet-based research that wasn't my yeah. area of specialty at all but um yeah. yeah I've seen sort of linguistically the, the like you say the connections that can be made in the brain just yeah. by yeah. learning a second language mm. um I mean even like from an adult perspective in future it's said that one of the best ways to prevent brain degenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's yeah. um yeah do the crosswords do the pseudoku and everything but apparently foreign a foreign language was top of the list in terms of potentially wow. preventing um the effects of that so there's there, there must be something in it yeah definitely. Um, keeping your brain yeah. active and growing and yeah. all those all those yeah. benefits yeah that's, that's, it. that's it yeah so, and especially yeah. I mean, we live in a world now that is so connected you can you, yeah. we can travel we are not in these sort of sections that we were hundreds of years ago where you probably wouldn't come across many different languages but now we, we're we're yeah 
you know, we're high flyers, aren't we? And yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Multicultural. And so to be able to yeah. to communicate like that is yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just nice watching it develop from an early age as well. Yeah. And like I say, it was absolute gold that just seeing on the playground that yeah, it works. And there's there's that willingness to be friends. And mm. um, yeah, without wanting to sort of like overly um, romanticize it, you know, it does give you hope for when this generation of of like our children are, are grown up. You know, can we actually start communicating again? Because yeah. Um, yeah sort of loosely touched on it it's, it's been a long time since we were able to go to Russia for obvious reasons yeah. and you know one day I hope that we'll start speaking to each other in in a way again that yeah. means that yeah um and it's yeah that makes me think as well bigger picture about being able to communicate with other countries and our future generations having that understanding of language so it's even for leadership of countries of not just being down to translation but actually being able to understand each other better and um surely there's got to be good goodness that can come from that absolutely Um, absolutely so parents who may be listening to this perhaps with even you know babies or young children or maybe even expecting a child that they haven't even had yet um and they know they're going to be bringing them into a bilingual household and yeah. they have no idea where to start with this other than intuition, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. which I'm sure goes a long way. Um, sure. What would be your kind of top tips for a parent? You know, we do have a lot of mum listeners, but dads too, that, sure. that, that, are, that might be thinking, how do we help our child to learn both languages and maybe more than two, but, you know, multi-language, multilingual, but... Um, without confusing them or overwhelming them or in any way delaying their yeah. learning yeah. sort of in school. In absolutely, sort of absolutely. Yeah, I would say the top tip from me would be keep going. Um, don't be disheartened. Um, there will be phases where um, your child, and, and I say I'm probably generalising here, but from what I've learned along the way, yeah. there will be phases where your child almost rejects the minority language, um, refuses to speak it, but just keep going. Um, yeah, it's still good to keep the passive, like the passive knowledge, if you keep speaking that language at home, will still be there. And um, yeah, communicating with your child when they're old enough about why we're doing this, you know, it gives you a connection to daddy, it gives you a connection to mummy, and we can chat to grandma and what, you know, all the lovely things that come off the back of that. Yeah, Um, yeah, it's, um, so yeah, keep going, absolutely. Um, Be as consistent as you can, but don't beat yourself up Mm. if you find that you're falling into um, habits that might not support language acquisition of the minority language. Mm. Um, Whatever you do, you know, don't criticise yourself. It's hard work. Mm. Um, And sometimes, you know, it doesn't, you have weeks where, you know, maybe someone's been ill or you've just had a bit of a traumatic time and it just means that you've fallen into, say, your own language for a while rather than the minority language. Yeah, yeah, don't, you know, don't criticise yourself because you're doing your best. And it's hard to keep something like that going 24 seven in the exact way, um, especially when this, you know, I don't believe there's much scientific research to say that's the way you have mm. to do it. And that's the way you shouldn't. Um, it's, it's different strokes for different folks. So Definitely. for us, um, it was it was a realisation that um, Maya, when she was a baby, um, I was speaking to her in English, we were going to go down the whole one parent, one language approach, which for many families is perfect. Um, But because my husband was working in an office at the time, um, he wasn't really able to spend many waking hours with Maya. Mm. And um, I'd heard that, you know, once six months is, is there, they start being able to differentiate between different languages. And I definitely saw that with Maya. Um, I was speaking to my husband on the phone and we speak in Russian to each other and her demeanour changed. She suddenly got very excited and I realised, I thought, she can tell that I'm speaking to somebody who she loves um, because Mm -hmm. that's the language that we speak to one another. She noticed the difference. I've been speaking to my parents in the living room and then suddenly the phone went and she, she was really excited and that kind of told me, right, she knows now, she can hear, she's 
the gates are open yeah. and, and then I realized that again there is a bit of research to show that you do need to spend a certain amount of your waking hours yeah. Um, yeah. with the minority language mm. um, and for us that wouldn't have been enough if it was a one parent one language approach mm-hmm. um, and that was a strange decision to some but I started speaking to my chat my um, to Maya and eventually to Daniel in Russian even when I was alone with them yeah. very yeah. weird at first very very weird yeah. um, yeah. but I could I've been privileged enough to be able to do it and yeah. Yeah. as a result they got more exposure to yeah. Their, yeah. the language um, potentially that means that they make the same mistakes as I do and again, parents don't criticise yourself for that and don't criticise your children for making those mistakes as hard as it is when you're thinking, oh, please, please don't say it like that. Um, yeah, it's just just go with the flow yeah. um, and don't get disheartened when the bumps in the road happen. They will. They will. Um, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th- I would say that our health visitors were very supportive as well. Um, there wasn't the, like, oh, there could be speech delays. There's a lot of myths around bilingualism. Yeah. Um, and if your child starts talking it's um, a bit later, it's probably because they're busy. I don't know. Again, anecdotally, they're probably busy filtering through the filing system. Oh, I think I know this word. I know that word. But uh, yeah. which one should I use? Um, mm-hmm. they're processing two languages there so yeah. they, they might be just um, sending you a holding email before they yeah, kind yeah. of speak to you so uh, there's a lot to yeah 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 so, um, so yeah it. don't be afraid yeah I think that yeah that's really interesting because I think having not obviously experienced that myself I think about like the times when we would you'd sort of point to a thing and say the word and they're learning the word and if you point if you're saying one word one day and one word another day it, yeah but then they just accept that it's it is both basically yeah. it's true and then they yeah. start to piece all these these words all belong in this in this pot and these words yeah. all belong in this pot and then but that's I love that you did that you know you adopted the the second language so that you weren't one parent and and one parent one language I, I can see how that could work really well okay I speak this language with this person I speak these words with this person brilliant but if one person's not going to have as much of that time to yeah. to nurture that then that would end up getting a bit left behind so the fact that you brought that in and and did that's really admirable and um I'm sure lots of people will be thinking oh, I'm gonna have to brush up now so that I can, oh, yeah, <laughs> I can yeah. share this you can do it you absolutely can do it anyone who's thinking like oh you know should I should I yeah go for it go for it you'll feel really weird at first and yeah. it'll feel odd but then it just kind of becomes part of your family personality as well that yeah. that's what happens and yeah and yeah your, your children might um, adapt your mistakes but if it's just uh, you know for communication if it's for you know we have the emotional conversations in our own languages in this house yeah. Um, yeah. but as long as there's still that link there then you hopefully achieved what you set out yeah. to do which is just to, to give them um, access to both of you um, yeah. in yeah. both languages and uh, yeah have that closeness really so. yeah that's so lovely oh that's so lovely and so reassuring and I think there will be people listening who needed to hear this and needed this message um and I think if there's yeah one thing I've taken from it is that you know what a wonderful gift that you can give to your children to be able to give them multiple ways to communicate um and you know for it's for another episode but in there's other forms of communication that we haven't even touched upon from body language and sign language and you know there's so many other uh, so many times in life where having resources to be able to communicate in different ways can really help and it might be the child can't find the words they were really are looking for in one language but they've got them in another language and yeah. they can find a way for that to then serve them and I think what a great gift to be able to give and uh, yeah, the problem solving skills. I would yeah. I would like to say again, I don't know what they'd be like if they were monolingual, but I do see that yeah, there are some there are definite benefits that the problem solving skills are mm. quite highly honed. You know, there's there's always another way because in language there's another way. There's so another way. in life there must be another way. And what a great metaphor. Yeah. Great it's, metaphor for life. It's not yeah. a simple track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. so yeah so it's just and yeah and it's one just yeah 
parents have fun with it um yeah. and yeah and let your children surprise you because they will and they won't they won't learn things in the same way yeah. um either um Maya could switch at, you know being asked to do that right we're just going to speak Russian here today um Daniel um, we asked him on the playground to do that in St Petersburg once and he said to us I talk in Ruski and uh, we said no you're not you, you need to speak Russian because you're not I talk in Ruski like that and he thought he was in his mind he was because he probably doesn't differentiate between the two and he didn't at that age it's just yeah yeah um, and so you yeah. see some blending, do you, with like, yeah, 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 yeah with Maya, languages. not so much. Um, she was very sort of regimented, if you yeah. know, it blew my mind. And um, yeah, he definitely blended. But again, that's going back to the advice before. Don't panic when they do blend. They're not yeah. mixing mm-hmm. the languages up. Um, they will separate them eventually. But yeah. it's mm-hmm. just, you know, it's children are process. natural problem solvers anyway, aren't they? They just, yeah. they'll go for the quickest approach. And for Daniel, that was, well, I can tell it you, I can give you a selection of words and I know you'll you know understand. what I mean <laughs> exactly exactly yeah and he knows who who's speaking his language and who isn't because he mm. definitely can pull it out of the hat when he's got a Russian speaker only so yeah, yeah just let them entertain you let them surprise you and just yeah. enjoy the journey oh what lovely advice great words and really inspiring Rebecca it's been an absolutely fascinating conversation with you thank you thank you so much for sharing your personal experience and your um your your professional take on that too as a linguist it's um you're uniquely positioned there and it sounds like your children are doing wonderfully well with it too oh no thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure and it's yeah it's it's really nice to speak to you and yeah and I hope that uh yeah any other uh, parents out there can take something from this and yeah that's that's great and really really honored to be able to uh, chat about it today oh no thank you putting your putting your um inspiration out there into the world and and supporting people is just brilliant thank oh, you much appreciated